go to school, I happened to be a promo model. You know, I, did, I left that off in my application. I used to like stand next to things, cars, beers, <laughs> people. Um, um, and that was like my job. So I was, um, I was subleasing in, in West Philly. And one of the, the promo models was saying, because he was saying, this next place that we have to go is going to be really far away, so I need to pick you up from somewhere because it's going to be way north. So I said, okay, I'll just take the Broad Street line. And he was like, I'll pick you up from, um, from Broad and Gerard. And I said, okay, cool. So I get off on Broad and Gerard, and I didn't know that it was a bad neighborhood because I didn't know that like somebody would tell me to go there if it wasn't anywhere I should be. <laughs> so I just walked my little happy ass into McDonald's, got my muffin, got my coffee, and decided to sit outside of the gas station slash McDonald's because in the ghetto things are combined. So it was like, so I'm sitting there minding my own black ass, well, I don't want to say black ass business because I'm not racist. I was minding my own minority business while I was sitting on this little piece of cement, like it was like this thing, I'm sitting on the ledge eating my egg McMuffin and this guy comes up to me like, you know, in standard, like, um, pimp wear. He was wearing like, I don't know, some Air Force ones. I, whatever you think of in a rap video, that's what the hell he had on, except for the chain. He, he didn't have a whole lot of money, but you know, he had his, you know, he looked clean. So I'm sitting there my mom and he says to me, where have you been all my life? And I said to him, you know, because when I hear a corny line, like, have you been running through my mind? I'm like, of course I have, what was I wearing? Um, so I see, so he says that to me and I said, oh, I've been sitting here my whole life, I was born and raised on this piece of cement, waiting for you to come and rescue me from my circumstances, you know. And he's like, oh, you know, so really, you know, where have you been or whatever, girl? Like, you know, I can take care of you, whatever, and have that whole dialogue with me. And he was like, so do you work on this corner? Now, I didn't know he thought that I, I was wearing a white beater with like some sort of weird tattoo dragon looking thing on it because when you do promos they give you a shirt anyway so you just show up in like a tank top and I had on like some capris that were a little tight because I was a little bit poor and I had you know I gained weight you know from eating shit like honey buns and I hadn't got any pants yet. so yeah I guess and, and my head was shaved so I kind of had that crackhead appeal because I was also 20 pounds ago so he's like you know you work on this corner but I'm like you know not real like I was just like let me eat my McMuffin because now I'm realizing what time it is and I don't actually sell my body you know <laughs> This is for food, but like I never sold it for that. So then I'm sitting there, you know, a little bit disappointed in my situation, and then this white guy comes up, and I'm thinking it must be a good neighborhood because he's white. <laughs> and he's here, and he comes up to me, and he's wearing like this this navy blue suit jacket. Just just so you all know, this is 9 a.m. on a Sunday morning. So he's wearing a navy blue suit jacket with this emblem on it, like he went to like Will and Kate's wedding or something. So I'm like, oh, so he has like money, you know? So he's like one of those like classy white people. So I'm standing there, or whatever, sitting there, and he comes up to me and says, you know, so what can I get for five dollars? And then I was like, I don't know. I said, well, I got an egg McMuffin. <laughs> maybe a hash brown and an orange juice on top of all of this, you know, and you can have all that. And then the black guy who I shoot away early, he starts coming up, whatever, he was like, why are you talking to her, or whatever, and I think he's defending my honor, because, you know, because I still didn't know that he thought I was a prostitute, too, you know? And the guy's like, don't disrespect her, he was like, she's worth more than that, and I'm like, thinking, well, how much am I worth? So then he's like, she's worth at least 40 bucks, you know, and I'm thinking, 40 bucks, and I'm like, at this point, because I've been sitting all the time, I just stood up, because I was like, I weighed way more than 40 bucks, you know, like, really? Like, I mean, it's a thousand dollar range over here, you know, like, because it's like a model kind of look when you shave your head. I was like, I'm not, I'm not like with those cheap girls. So then I'm standing there or whatever, and they're arguing over this, this price of mine, and I'm like thinking, you know, this is kind of jacked up my, what does my life become that I'm here <laughs> haggling over my vagina. But, um, so then, so then my friends pull up and they had, they had a promo truck. It was a really big four-door pickup truck, big thing or whatever, with all these Pepsis and stuff in the back. And then I see them over there and then while they're arguing over my price, because the guy had gone up to $7 instead of 5 I then did that, um, you ever watch Tookers on Point on HBO? I did the whole run and I ran to the truck like this. <laughs> and then I dipped my head in and they're like, well, who the hell are you talking to? So I said, don't worry about it, everybody just be fine. And then I, then I let out loud, how, loud laugh all that. <laughs> then I said, okay. And then I hopped in the car and then we just rolled off. <laughs> so, I may have looked like a prostitute, but I wasn't. But no one ever found out. <laughs>